Hello everyone. In this video, I'll show and explain how I make a spoon from start to finish. Starting with the wood, I usually go around and look for fallen trees. Small forests and parks are perfect, especially after a storm or a windy night. Looking for a good piece can be tricky, as wood is degradable and can easily rot and get full of insects and bugs. I'm looking for a branch that fell recently. You could see a clean surface where the wood has been cut or broken, with condensed fibers that show it hasn't started to rot yet. I always look for pieces that do not touch the ground. This way, I know it's less likely to have worms and bugs inside. Choosing a dry environment which tells me that even if the piece fell weeks or months ago, it still has a chance to be usable. Once I find a good piece of wood, in this case a fallen oak branch, I look for a clean part of my desired length, without any small branches. As you can see here, this might not be perfectly clean of knots, but I already knew it will have interesting colors. Here I've put it in a piece of cloth to make sure it will not start to dry and crack. A plastic bag or anything that prevents the wood from drying will do the work. Now, I just wanted to remind you that I don't see myself as a teacher. This is my first video explaining my process with the goal of giving some of you new insights into this craft, from my perspective. I am not in a place where I can cover all of the basics of wood carving. So if you want to start carving, I would recommend looking for more videos which explain the basic rules for working with sharp tools to make sure you stay safe and avoid any unnecessary accidents. Getting back to my piece. I start by splitting the wood with an axe and a hammer. I have a wooden hammer or this rubber mallet to make sure I don't damage the back of the axe. As I try to minimize the noise I make, the rubber mallet is my choice. I choose where to split the wood according to its features. For my spoon, I want the clean part with fewer knots, but still, I can't always find a perfectly clean piece, and some knots might still exist. While it's not perfect and the most easy to carve, I like to work with what I find, and let the wood speak with its own uniqueness. I start axing the wood, cleaning it, aiming to have a blank canvas for the shape. Once it's clear enough, I decide which side will be the bowl and which will be the handle. I always prefer to have a clean section for the bowl, though here I had this little knot that I'll have to work with. I never really draw the shape in an exact way. Most of the time I won't draw it at all. But having a general idea and lines on the wood can help prevent me from cutting too deep with the saw or with the axe. Many wood carvers are very skilled with the axe, and I still find it quite hard. So although I could do this part with a knife, I wanted to practice my technique, trying to remove condensed areas that require more force. I always try to remember to stop myself in time before I go too deep, making a cut I will regret later on. Thank you. 
Once I have a general shape I'm satisfied with, I move to the knife. Here I have the Mora 120. I start by stropping the knife, making sure it's razor sharp before I start carving. I use the strop every time I notice my knife lost a bit of its edge, which happens around every 30 minutes of carving. It always takes some time to get the feeling of the wood, understanding the movement of the fibers and what carving direction each part needs. The knots require special attention, as they stop the continuous direction of the fibers and are much more condensed. I try to pay attention and carve slowly with a slicing motion to make sure I don't chip the knife. Having a cheap knife can be a headache, especially when just starting to learn knife sharpening. And one of the most common causes for chipping my tools is working wrongly while carving knots. Before starting to work on the ball of the spoon, I aim to reach a shape which I like. Going back and forth, looking at the spoon reflecting on what needs to be removed. Carving it again and again until I find a shape comfortable to my eyes. I believe that with this small technique I managed to improve my intuitive eye, giving me a tool to create freely, enjoying the process while enjoying the end result. Flipping and changing the direction of the piece is what lets me follow the motion and the personality of the wood. Honing this is what leads to carving without much frustration. Being hasty and lazy is usually the reason for making a wrong cut that can destroy the piece or even make a painful accident that will force the end of the carving session. For days and sometimes for weeks and months. Accepting the slow process of wood carving is the safest way to enjoy and end up with all ten fingers. You probably noticed already the countless times I carved in a motion towards my finger, hand or body. The only reason I let myself use these motions and techniques is that I work with my wrist. Moving the knife in a controlled motion, having my wrist acting as the core of the carving force, using all the muscles around to support the motion, giving me the ability to carve big pieces, too small and delicate. One of the hardest parts in carving a spoon is the connection between the bowl and the handle. I learned that when doing so, I should be extra patient, carving gently, changing the direction countless times. Light is very important, as it lets me carve with more control, knowing when to stop. I usually keep the final touches to after I'm finished with the bowl, 
This way, I still have something to play with, in case I'm not satisfied. So, the general shape is good, and it's time for the bowl carving. For this, I'll be using the Mora 164 hook knife. When I started to carve spoons, I was using round gouges. And only after several years, I decided to invest and buy this one, which actually has a more intuitive technique than the gouges in my opinion. That's why I would recommend it to someone who wants to start. This hook knife comes sharp when you buy it, and is quite hard to sharpen. I've already made some sharpening mistakes with it, and it's still hard for me to resharpen to the same satisfaction it had when it was new. If I would buy a new one, I would put extra effort into keeping it safe. Strapping it often, making sure I don't carve wood knots with it, unlike here. The basic technique with this knife is carving towards the thumb. It could be quite dangerous when not paying attention. But there are several protection measures for this that can be done. Cut resistance gloves for example, or a thumb protection made of leather or thick cloth. But I find both not very comfortable, losing my grip on the wood and my hand's agility for turning and changing directions quickly. But in the end, the safest way is to make sure the carving motions come from the wrist, like I said before. I might make a more in-depth video on my techniques and how to implement them, so if you're interested, leave a comment. This way I'll probably be more motivated to make it soon. Once I have a final shape, it's time for the final touches. Starting with the knife, I remove very slowly and gently small pieces. And again, I reflect on the shape every few strokes. As now, it becomes much harder to decide if a cut should be made or not. The way I decide has to do with lines. I look for smooth and comfortable to the eye lines. I'm not sure how to explain it in words, but one thing that helped me understand it is by looking at plants for these lines. Even when they grow in a random way, there is always beauty to each line and shape. As you can see, I use the tip of the knife for most of these cuts. The tip might have less force, but has much more flexibility and control. Carving in a round motion lets me go into the wood, having a narrow blade that lets me go out whenever I want, leaving behind a smooth cut. Thank you. 
Now, before moving on to the final stages, I need to make sure the spoon is dry. Usually, until I finish carving, it dries by itself. But if not, I will leave it for a day or two. Depending on how I want the spoon texture to be, I will use some sandpaper for the final touches. If I like the knife and the tool markings, I will only use a very fine grit, just to open the wooden pores so the finishing oil will penetrate more easily. But sometimes I want an extra even smooth surface without any markings. Then I'll use several grits, starting from 80 slowly going up to 320. I use a small metal ruler if I want flat facets, but also any other flat and hard material could work. The spoon is almost finished, and the last step is the oil. Here I use walnut oil, the type you buy to season salads and food. There are many types of oil that can be used for finishing wood. One quick look online can list most of them. I found that walnut oil gives me the best colors and wood texture that I feel good with. Once the whole spoon is completely covered, I wipe all the excess oil with a cloth or some kitchen paper. I wait for a few days for the oil to dry before using it, making sure it's well protected. And the spoon is finished. So that's it for today's video. Please let me know if you would like more of these narrated videos. Thank you for watching, keep creating, and I'll see you next time.